She's rock and rolling, leather wearing, cool acting Cher. I am the kind of the bad guy in this particular story. But when she found out that her daughter Chastity was gay, I'm sure that I was worried about my phony baloney image. You know, Sonny and Cher's daughter, big lesbian. She went ballistic, hissy fit kind of thing. Down, dirty, screaming and yelling, firing everybody. I knew that she would have a difficult time with mm -hmm. it. I was close with my father, and it was easier on him at first. Today, Cher and Chastity. Talk about how they got through it. Were you in denial about it? I knew, but I kept thinking, you know, it'll go away. I mean, I, how stupid was I? Cher and her daughter, Chastity. I wanted her to grow up, get married, have a child, get divorced, and live happily ever after. <laughs> Coming up. Run on, run on. I believe I'll run on. See what the end will be. Believe I'll work on. Have a seat. Okay, as a little girl, she grew up in the spotlight on her parents' television program, The Sonny and Cher Show. This clip is from 1975. Take a look. What would you do with a television show of your own? I mean, how would you come out? I would sing songs and do sketches. All right, I'll introduce you. And uh, you can come out and... Uh... <laughs> From Television City in Hollywood. What's your name? <laughs> Chastity. Do you want Chastity or Chastity Bono? Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Television City in Hollywood, the Chastity Bono Show. But Chastity's life in the public eye didn't prepare her for the ultimate invasion of her privacy. Before she was ready, she says she was outed by a supermarket tabloid, exposing to the world that she was gay. Chastity retreated into the closet and lived the life of a recluse for nearly five years. And now she's put her story into a new book. The book is called Family Outing. Talking about this for the very first time together, please welcome... Cher and her daughter, Chastity Bono. Good title, family outing. Wow. So you were outed before you were ready to admit it to the world. Yeah, I was, I was out to family and friends, but I wasn't, you know, at the point where I felt comfortable being out to everybody. And especially, you know, as the tabloids don't usually say it in the nicest way either, and they certainly embellish. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a really difficult time. When we were looking at that little clip back there, I don't know if you saw that, mm -hmm. and you were mother and daughter dressing alike and... The whole idea of having your daughter grow up and being the, yeah. your share, the, the, one of the great dressers of our times. So to have your daughter grow up and to be able to dress her and her to wear the little frilly little things, is that a part of the dream? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, um, when she was little, it just, she was always into playing dress up anyway you know I used to paint her face and you know make her clowns and all and that kind of stuff. What a closet you had to choose from. <laughs> yeah but you know as she as she started to get a little bit older than that you know she she all but she was a tomboy so that was okay because I was always a tomboy it was later that I knew that there was not going to be any you know beads in her closet. Mm. <laughs> Tomboy, and did you, didn't you say in the book how you thought sometimes uh, that 
her father would reward her for being a tomboy because Absolutely. he wanted a boy. Yes, he mm -hmm. always wanted a boy. And he, you know, she was El Primo Jr. He had little suits made for her and stuff like that. When she was little, it was okay. It started to be a problem for me later. Like later, like adolescence? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then she got a boyfriend at one point, and you were so excited. Yeah. But that didn't last very long. Yeah. <laughs> when did you know? You know, over the years, over the years, I've interviewed lots of people who say they always knew. They always felt it. They always knew. Right. And I know you talk... In, in family outing about the, the moment where you felt that sure well I always as even as a young child felt different and I just didn't know what that was but you know when I was you know young the majority of my friends were boys and um, you know I just didn't really fit in with girls and then as I got even a little bit older when boys and girls started relating to each other I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere but I didn't know what it was and um, it was really, for me, when I saw the film Personal Best um, and, you know, was able to see uh, two women together on a screen that it was kind of like a light bulb went off in my head and it's like, that's it. That's, that's what I've been feeling. How you know? old were you? I was 13. It was like r right at my 13th birthday. Wow. And were you in denial about it? Uh, yes. I mean, un unfortunately... I chose that route instead of, you know, something else that would have been a lot more positive. But I always knew. I knew way before she did. You did? Yeah. And how did you know? So, because you were it's doing a, this for all the parents. It's kind of a mother out. thing. You knew? Yeah, I just knew. Um, and so, so, so having the feeling inside, I knew, but I kept thinking, you know, it'll go away or maybe it isn't, you know. You talk candidly in the book about not bringing it up would make made you think that it would go away would disappear so if you just remain silent then it disappears yeah but i mean I, how stupid was i <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know it yeah. doesn't work with anything else right right and so how did you find the actually your father who passed away just this past january right yeah i um you told first i told my father first and um i actually i i could, had kind of been really hinting with him and he finally brought it up to me and said, you know, I feel like there's something that you want to talk about with me and you can, you can tell me anything. And I told him. And then shortly after that, I met um, what turned out to be my first long-term girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I think that my mom, you know, started to see a change in me all of a sudden and, um, and, and went to my dad and, and asked him. I think that's kind of how it happened. And on page 207, you say, page 207, you say you went ballistic. Absolutely. <laughs> Hissy fit kind of thing. Total. Down, dirty, rolling, holding my breath till I turned blue, screaming and yelling, firing everybody, relatives, people who worked for me. Uh -huh. I just went around the house screaming and yelling. And why? Because, first of all, because it was why? now you actually... Always, a, always, you just said you always knew. But there's a, there's a difference between always feeling and then having everyone talking uh, that having it be it this is the deal having having the internal feelings but then having it be yes this is this is the way it is and also then i went to everybody i went to my sister did you know yes i went to my sister did you know D did everybody did the i went to the gardener did you know you know everybody in the universe seemed to know but me so it was a combination of it being the real thing, everyone knowing but me, and then feeling really bad because Chas couldn't come to me and say it. Which I thought was so interesting, because we were talking about it, the producer and I was saying, so you wanted to come to you, part of it is you felt bad because you're like, you didn't come to me, you didn't co confide in me, and then you go ballistic, and that's the reason why she didn't confide in you. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, it was, it w I went ballistic more because everyone else knew, and everyone was kind of, going, oh, yes, we knew, but, and we feel, you know, sorry that you didn't know, but, so it just, it was a, it was a whole bunch of different emotions, you know? What were you waiting on to tell Cher, your mother? I, I was just scared to, I mean, why? Because I, I knew that she would have a difficult time with mm -hmm. it. I, I just instinctively knew, I know, I mean, the, the, thing that gets asked to me probably the most in interviews is like what well, you know she's share you know she's she's been around gay people forever mm -hmm. and it's true I mean I didn't grow up feeling that there was a, a trace of homophobia from her I mean we had 
gay people as close, close friends of the family, yeah. but I knew it would be hard for her that I was. And I, I don't know how I knew that, but I just instinctively knew it. And I don't know why. I mean, I don't... I mean, why, if you were so accepting of other yes, people... right. ...that when it's your own daughter? Yeah. But I always said, and I have a completely new perspective, you don't know what your beliefs are until you're tested and have to really stand behind them. We can all say we are everything, right. but unless someone, you know, puts the mirror in your face and says, this is what it is now, what, now, now back it up. Now really, what do you believe? So it took me a little while to get back to my beliefs. Did it bring out, did you, did you think then you were homophobic? No, I never thought I was. I mean, you know, you are what you are, and I never thought I was. It had something to do with her. That's and your expectations with... and dreams for your little girl. Yes, like I wanted her to grow up, get married, have a child, get divorced, and live happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As we go to break, take a look at these treasured family photographs of Sonny and Cher and their baby girl, set to a song called Chastity Son, recorded by her parents way back when, 1974. And written by me. And written by you. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's listen. about page 247 you come clean when you talk yes. and tell other Cher was saying she never thought she'd be the be the bad guy in a book yes in, in but Chastity's she's book not. she's I, not the I, bad I, guy at all I know there's a lot of gay and lesbian people in here and we know she's not the bad guy at all well no but I am the kind of the bad guy in this particular story who redeems herself and then becomes <laughs> the champion of the people Chastity's new book is that's what we're talking about it's called family outing it's really a guide on how to help families deal with the coming out process and in this book, Cher reveals why she was angry at how Sonny uh, delivered the news that Chastity, Chastity was gay. Yeah. You were just saying you were angry because... Well, because, well, everybody knew, but then, you know, Son knew, and he knew that I didn't know, and he knew that it was a problem for us. I mean, it was a problem for us. Son and Chast were much closer after a certain age, you know, after about four years, five years old. They were much closer... Um, First of all, because I went out and started working constantly, and so that made a gap mm -hmm. just because I was the absent parent. But then as she started to become, you know, a, a teenager, it was a big problem for us. I mean, we were still close. We still did things together, but it was always in... It was like the big elephant in the living room that no one talks about, right. you know? You just always know it's there. So it could be forgotten for a little while, but it would always come back. And you, would you want that elephant to come out? No, I think we were both afraid of the elephant coming out. Uh -huh. I mean, I think that's why now, it took so long. Isn't it the reason why so many, over the years, we've done many shows about it, and I think coming out day used to be, it like, is. It's October. Coming up. It's, it's October coming up. It's October 11th. Yeah. Okay, so we've done many shows about that, and people are always afraid, I've heard, of not being loved by the parent. Right. And you say, you knew your father would love you no matter what. Right. Was the fear that your mother would not, would no longer love you? I think it is a fear. I don't think it was a completely rational fear. And I think for a lot of gay and lesbian people, it, it's something that goes through your mind. I think ultimately I knew that she would be able to accept it eventually, but I also knew that it was going to be a big deal for a while. And, and it, it's, it really, I mean, for a lot of people it's an irrational fear. And unfortunately for some people it is a very real fear and they do lose their parents over it. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew you that then, wasn't you, the case. I, was, I was saying on page 240, 247, you're redeemed because <laughs> you, you say what parents should do. Sit back, relax, listen to it, and then. Well, you know, after I trashed the house and did all that, <laughs> then I said, yeah, take it in. Right. <laughs> relax, see? <laughs> and I called Chas and I said, you guys better come out here. And Meaning so, her and her Heidi, partner. Yeah, yeah. Chas and Heidi. So they came out. 
And we did we go up to the sushi bar that night? No. <laughs> well, it seemed we to me to, that we went up to the sushi we, bar that yeah, night. We went to see your therapist. Oh. We, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> then we went to the sushi then bar. <laughs> I feel like my mom just said, my mom can't remember anything either. <laughs> so you went to see your therapist to, what, talk about it? Yeah. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. To kind of learn how to deal with it as a, as a family. Yeah, to come to, to, come to well, a new, to new, right. new way yeah, of to communicating about it. To be constructive and also to, because I knew when I asked her to come out, you know, from New York to Los Angeles, that this couldn't be something that we were going to fight about because... In my mind, I thought, you know, I, I made like a laundry list in my mind. So this is happening, and this is happening, and this is happening, and this is happening. But how does it change her? How is she different because oh, of Oh, that's it? what you talk about in 240. And I could remember not all come the... up with anything that was really different about To remember about her. everything you've always loved about yes, this child. Yes, yes. And I could not come up with a... She, she was the same exact person. And so I realized this was not my life, this was my daughter's life, and your job as a parent is to support your children. That's your job. <laughs> were, you, were you ever afraid of, you know, a lot of parents who don't have a life, you know, not even close to as public as yours, are worried about what the neighbors will think, what the minister will think, oh, what I'm society sure will that. think, I'm what the sure guy at the grocery that. store. Yes. Were you worried in any way oh, yes. about your I'm sure that public I was image? I'm worried about my phony baloney, baloney image, you know, for a little while. And I'm not sure even, I couldn't even go there to figure out what it was that I was worried about because people were certainly used to me not doing the regular thing. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I had any people, you know, at the first... Christian church or whatever the Jerry Faldwell area is that we're gonna go oh can't be a, f a fan of hers anymore you know so I was trying to figure out what my real problems were and I think that it must have been a little bit of everything I was worried about I knew how horrible the media was mm -hmm. I knew they were just gonna use that to rip her apart Sonny mm -hmm. and Cher's daughter you know mm -hmm. big lesbian so I I was nervous about and all they those did things. Oh, yeah. and they did and they did and, and I think also I mean for so many parents, and, and one of the, the points that I try to get across in this book is that coming out is not something that just gay people do. The people in your life really need to come out and be open about yeah, it do. as well. Talk about that. And, you know, I've talked to so many parents. Yeah, you talk that, about how when kids come out, the parents go in the closet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and they really need to get through that. And I, I've you know, talk with so many parents who have completed that process and the little simple things that they were so afraid of, you know, what are people at the country club going to think, what are the neighbors going to think or whatever, when they finally do come out to them, it's not, oh, I'm aghast, but oh, really, you know, my niece is gay or, you know, one of my sons is gay. It, that's how it, you know, nine out of ten times happens. And, you know, this, this honesty and this being open and being out, just it, it's infectious and it breeds into this really positive thing that has the exact opposite effect that parents think, and gay people think it's going to have. Well, it's not uncommon for a parent to react negatively when they find out that their child is gay. When Ellen DeGeneres was here, she shared how her father reacted to her coming out. Here's just a little bit of that, what Ellen said. At the time you told your dad, he was with, you know, an, his new wife, mm -hmm. right? And your stepmother. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened? Um, well, actually, he, he told me that he figured it out. I was upset about something, and he kept saying, did you rob a bank? Did you kill somebody? Did you? And I kept saying, you know, no, I, you, I just don't want to tell you. And finally, I told him, and he, actually, he told me. And uh, then they asked me to move out of the house. Mm -hmm. And um, so because. Uh, she had two little girls that they worried that it would influence them, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. really hurt because I, I loved them. Wow. That happens to a lot of kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's a legitimate fear. It's an absolutely legitimate fear. I mean, it's estimated that 30% of, um, you know, teenagers uh, on the street are gay youth, gay and lesbian youth. So it's, you know, there's some very real and scary statistics. So, you know, there's a three-time higher suicide rate among gay and lesbian youth. And happens during that teen period. Mm hmm Yes. Now, again, do you want to say that to parents? Because that's the whole purpose of, you know, family outing. What you say in the book about 
go, going through the list in your head of things that you love about this child because it's the same person. You know what? I think that while there is a stigma about being homosexual, people are going to have a difficulty with it at first because no one wants, I mean, everyone wants to have the person who's the head of the football team or the or the cheerleader or no one wants to have someone in their family that's that's perceived as a negative force so until people are who they are and 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 gay and lesbian people show the good side not just the dressing up in drag and 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 the family value side of people and just who they are the everyday nice people that they are then then it's still going to be something that people are not so ready to welcome and go, oh, God, you're gay. I'm so thrilled. You know? What do you want to say, Chad? Well, yeah, I mean, as my mom was saying, it's hard. You know, the religious right is, does a wonderful job of, of distorting what gay and lesbian people are in this country and, and somehow making it seem like we are, you know, anti-family, anti-family values. And, you know, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, you know, the majority of gay and lesbian people that I know, and myself included, want exactly what everybody else wants, you know, to be happy, to have a family, to be a productive member of society. And the only way to really combat homophobia is by people coming out, gay and lesbian people, their family members, their friends, and letting America know that, you know, we, we are no different. There's no reason to fear us. We're just like you. Even though you would come out to, even though, you come out to your family, your family members. When you see it on the tabloids, that made you retreat. Right. Why? Wasn't ready yet. Wasn't ready. I mean, it, the coming out, it's a process. And that's, an, you know, another thing I try to explain in the book. It doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, you have to do it in the time that you need to do it. And I, I just simply, at that point in my life, wasn't ready yet. Well, also, n no one, it's like if someone said to you, you couldn't be heterosexual anymore, you would not be able to accomplish it. You know, right. yeah. you are who you are. And we're not very forgiving of people who, who aren't exactly like the majority. I mean, it's a big problem in our country for every group of people who are minorities. We have to allow people to be who they honestly are. I mean, it would be the, I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world to not be gay. So who in the, who in, who in the world would choose it? So you're going to have right. to go through all this stuff that's going to be hard. You're going to be kept out of places. People are going to hate you for no reason. They don't even know you. So who would choose that as a lifestyle? But if that's who you are, if that's what you feel, then how can we how can we ignore that and how can we how can we persecute people for being who they are well she waited years to tell someone in her family about her relationships with women and just three days ago kim came out with the truth for the first time how that went we'll find out when we come back my greatest hope for tonight is that my sister will still respect me and love me as she did yesterday Uh, we're talking to Cher and to Chastity Bono about uh, Chastity's new book, which is about her story coming out to her family and also many other families. It really is a guide to those of you who, who are going to be coming out to your families and also trying to help parents with, you know, gay teenagers to understand what that is and how to be more understanding. For many gay people, the hardest step is coming out to those who are closest to them. And Kim decided that the time was now to come out to her sister first, and we went to talk to her just before she took that step. For about three or four years now, I've been wanting to tell somebody in my family, um, mainly my sister, who I'm going to tell tonight for the first time. I like to tell my sister first because we have not been very close through the years, and I feel that it could be partially my fault for not being able to be totally honest about who I am, and I'm hiding from her. I'm probably just going to come out and tell her something I've been wanting to talk to her about for a long time. When we were kids, she used to tease me about being gay and, and things like that, because I was a tomboy. Just let her know that there's something I'm battling in my heart. I'm just going to explain it to her <laughs> as best as possible. 
Uh, my worst fear to telling my sister would probably be that she would eliminate me from her life and my niece and nephew's lives. They have a very dear place in my life, so I don't want to lose them. My greatest hope is to be accepted for my sister and other people to see me just for who I am, that they still see me for my heart and my soul and, and Kim. Well, what Kim did is what Chastity recommends in the book, and that is coming out first to someone that you trust other than a parent. And yeah. the reason for that is? Well, I think that, you know, just in starting out, I mean, if that person that you really trust is a parent, then come out to that person. But come out to somebody who you, who you think will be able to accept it and who you can kind of, it's almost like, you know, breaking it in slowly, mm -hmm. so to speak. How did know? it go? Uh, it went really well. Uh, it was scary, really scary at first. But um, it ended up very positive. Very positive. She wrote you this letter. Can I read it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Dear Kim, I know you were afraid because I am too. I am trying to be understanding. There will probably be times I will also be confused and become distant. I cannot pretend to know how you feel. The decision you have made will make your road into the future harder than what it has been. But if you have survived this long, I believe you will make it through the rises and the falls that are ahead of you. God never gives us more than we can handle. No matter who you choose in your life to make you happy, it will not change the fact that you are my sister. I love you and my heart will always be open for you. Love, Christy. Oh, nice. I was gonna say, do you plan to tell anybody else, but you don't have to. <laughs> You don't have to tell another soul. No, you took care of that Go over, pop in this tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody would want to be embraced and have that kind of, you know, reaction, but it isn't always the case. When we come back, she's a New York City model who recently told her parents that she's gay. Her mom says she never suspected, unlike Cher, unlike Ellen DeGeneres' father, unlike so many people we've heard over the years, we're going to meet a mother and daughter who are still trying to work through the shock and through the denial. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Amber is a New York City model who came out to her parents a year and a half ago, and their family is still trying to work through the emotions, many of the emotions that Chastity Boner describes in her new book, Family Outing. How did you come out, Amber? I came out to my mother over the phone. Mm. I called her up and I needed advice. My mother is my source of advice mm -hmm. and words of wisdom. And she didn't know what I was going through, but in order for me to get what I needed out of her, I needed to tell her. And I spoke to her and I told her over the phone. Wow. Yes. And how was that for you, Lola? So you say, I, I read in my notes that you didn't have a clue? No. How could you? The stereotype is butch or, you know, the male situation, and I had no idea. She was a song leader, she danced, she did everything. She wore the dresses, she did everything. And she's modeling? Modeling. She does, she, she's wonderful. And and she's my daughter amber said something um to one of our producers i think you said this to that that your mom is grieving the grandchildren she won't have or thinks uh, she won't have but it's i think she went through she's the grieving the wedding exactly um <laughs> the white gown mourning, and the doves exactly mourning mourning the death of her unborn grandchildren and do you think some of that's true you know? it could be i never thought of it that way but she could still have children. Mm -hmm. I could still have I the can, wedding. Right. I mean, Absolutely. I'm... Um, Are you mourning the death of tradition? Uh, could very well be, but we can start our own tradition. Mm -hmm. I... <laughs> and it's interesting that parents help their children through almost every problem that exists, whether they're having trouble in school or mm -hmm. whether they're having emotional problems or whatever, your parents are there. But on this one issue, so often, even if parents suspect it, they are terrified to help their child through with this. 
And, you know, that is so important. There's a story in my book of a family where the son was, you know, deciding whether or not to kill himself or to tell his mother that he was gay. And he had decided to kill himself. And by the grace of God, his mother had happened upon a uh, gay and lesbian youth support group and got a pamphlet for it and was suspecting that, you know, her son might be gay. And she just handed it to him and said, you know, I don't know if you can use this or if one of your friends could use this, but I saw this and I, and I thought that it might be helpful to you. She saved his life. You know, she saved his life by doing that. Mothers and fathers say they felt hurt, rejected, and blamed themselves because their children were gay. Next, parents revealed their first reactions. We'll be back. Some went ballistic, too. Back in a moment. Okay, I have a daughter. She's a lesbian. I'm the stepdad of uh, a young man that... I found out was gay. We are parents of a gay son. It was as big a shock to her to be a lesbian as it was for me to hear it. We approached each other very warily. I don't know whether part of that was just the stepson, stepfather routine, uh, or part of just as a straight man, gay son. I think when I found out, it was like, it was almost like having a death in the family because I had all these expectations for him. It hurt. It really did. For a period of time, I felt gypped. I really felt gypped. At times, I felt like we were the only parent in Illinois that had a gay son, which I know is stupid. I didn't really have the feeling of rejecting him, but I had the feelings of that I was going to be rejected by other people. You're going to think of moments that you wish you could do them over, and I just went through every single one of those over and over again, thinking, you know, what did I do wrong? I went through for the first six months or so thinking I had I'm the father of a gay son written on my forehead and everybody could see it he questioned why I didn't have a problem with him I was looking at more of him as a person rather than a gay man uh, everything is wonderful today it was something we just had to go through it took it took a while to be able to say this is my son I still love him Matthew and your mom you felt as some of the other parents just expressed who's sitting in front of you that it was your fault as, the, as his mother, like you'd done something wrong? That was my first reaction. Um, Matthew's dad died when he was 13. Please stand up, both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His dad died when he was 13, and so um, I thought, being a strong person, that I somehow created the situation. And of course, he told me just this past July. I loved him the July, day. July 98? Mm hmm. I loved him the day before he told me, and I loved him the day he told me, and I love him today. That doesn't change. But I'm still having a hard time dealing with it. What is it you're having a hard time dealing with? Could you articulate it? Well, part of it is I come from a large Catholic, Irish Catholic family. Mm -hmm. And um, we have That's part. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's not just part. That's a whole lot right um, there. It, it's kind of hard to explain it to them. It, it really is. We haven't told all of the family. They'll know now, but... Um, <laughs> uh, Better get on that one. Mm -hmm. um, but that, I think that is the hardest part of all, is just getting to the point where you're going to tell everybody else. I also think that mothers and fathers are, are so excited about bragging to their friends or the family or telling everybody in their community what their children are doing and then I think that if you find out you have a gay child then you're least like you don't want to then say you can accept them but it's hard to be proud of them to your friends you know oh you know Chas is going to this gay rally and I'm so excited and you know you know it's it's a difficult thing so a lot of it has to do with who you are as as a person how much you can put yourself on the line and say I'm not just going to accept my child. I'm going to be proud of them no matter who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's what parents have got to break the back of. Chastity's book is called Family Outing. Family Outing. <laughs> you like that title? Good title. <laughs> Coming up, we begin a special series of Remembering Your Spirit with one of my favorite people on the earth. Back in a moment. Good job.